Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy and our continuation of the discussion on the hand. In this video we're going to be looking at the dorsal side of the hand or the dorsum of the hand commonly referred to as the back of the hand. Now we have extensors in the posterior compartment of the forearm that come down into the hand to insert. We have extensor digitorum. Uh, we also have for the second digit uh, the extens extensor indicus and for the fifth digit extensor digiti minimi. All of those are long extensors and of course extensor digitorum has four tendons, one for each digit uh, two through five. So if we look at that tendon, it would be coming in like so. And as it gets to the region of the metacarpal phalangeal joint, it spreads out. It's what's known as the extensor expansion. So I'll draw that in like so. Let's see if we can fill it. The extensor expansion. And then it continues with a major a major tendon going to the middle phalange but it also has two wing like structures that wrap around I'm exaggerating the the curve to insert on the distal phalange so if we put some labels in here we have the long extensor tendon that is here and we have the extensor expansion and the extensor expansion is this wide area here. And this is the way it looks when the long extensors are active. In other words, when there's tension on this tendon. Now, we also have some other muscles coming in here, muscles we talked about previously. And one of those muscles is the dorsal interosseous. We also have the palmar interosseous, and we have the lumbricals. But if we look at 
just the dorsal interosseous muscle right now. And I'm not going to draw in the um, Palmer one because it just complicates the diagram. It inserts onto one of these wings coming out to go to the distal phalanx. So again, let's draw in some fibers to give you a feeling for what this muscle looks like. And the other muscle is the lumbrical, and I'm just going to put it on the other side. And it also inserts on a wing coming off of this extensor expansion. So, let me label these. The dorsal interosseous muscle. and the lumbrical. Over here. And as I said, this is the arrangement that you see when the digit is fully extended, when there's tension on the long extensor tendon. Now, let's take a look at this from the side. We're looking at the dorsal surface now. Let's look at the, the medial or lateral surface. Now, in a view from the side, from the lateral, again, we'll come with the long extensor tendon. Comes up like so. As it gets into the area of the metacarpal phalangeal joint, it will form an expansion. And what I'll do is I'll have the expansion wrap around the joint somewhat here. And then the major tendon centrally up to the middle phalanx and then a secondary tendon on each side that splits off and wraps around to go to the distal phalanx. Okay. And again, we will have lumbrical and interosseous. And in this view, just for simplicity's sake, um, I'm going to just draw in the lumbrical. So the lumbrical would be attaching and running like so. And let's color that in. So there is the lumbrical. So let's put some labels on uh, the diagram. The 
long extend your tendon the extensor expansion also called the extensor hood And then the lumbrical and the lumbrical is here in brown. So let's see what happens when the metacarpophalangeal joint is flexed. And I'm going to go back to the posterior view first. Now, in the skeletal diagram on the right, we have the metacarpophalangeal joint flexed. So, in this situation, the long extensor tendon is slack. The long extensor muscles are not active in pulling on the tendon. So, what happens is the extensor expansion moves distally. It moves past the metacarpophalangeal joint. And continuing the diagram, then we have the major part of the insertion going into the middle phalange and the two wings wrapping around to go to the distal phalange. Now, with this flexing, the finger is actually flexing away from you into the plane of the diagram. So let's add in the muscles. So the dorsal interosseous.
will be here. Like so. And then the lumbrical tied in again to the wing up here. like so. Let me clean up my lumber coal a little bit here. So now the metacarpal phalangeal joint is flexed. but the interphalangeal joints are extended. And because the long extensor tendon is not pulling on the expansion, the expansion can slide distally. So again, let's put in some, diag some labels. Extensor expansion. The long extensor tendon. dorsal interosseous and the lumbrical. Now, in the last slide, I want to take a look at this view from the side, from the lateral or medial side, as we did in the second drawing. So we'll change over to that view in the next slide. Now, in this slide, we have on the right again the metacarpal phalangeal joint flexed. And the only way that can happen is for the long extensor tendon to be slack, for there not to be tension on it. So it allows 
the extensor expansion to move distal. So here's the extensor expansion. In a distal position. And again, the central tendon coming off the expansion goes to the middle phalanx and the wing tendons pass around to the distal phalanx like so. And again I will draw in the lumbrical just bear in mind that the inner osseous muscles will also be attaching similarly. So the lumbrical coming up like so. So that when the lumbrical contracts and the long extensor is not holding the extensor hood back, holding it to the proximal side over the metacarpal phalangeal joint, the extensor expansion slides distally and now the lumbrical has a mechanical advantage for causing flexion of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. So when it pulls here, you can see how it can pull on this joint to cause flexion. Now granted, I've exaggerated everything to make it easier to see. It also, though, is pulling on the wing to extend the inner phalangeal joints. So flexing the metacarpal phalangeal joints, extending the interphalangeal joints. And again, let me put some labels in here. extensor expansion lumbrical And the long extensor tendon. And remember, the long extensor tendon, primary long extensor is extensor digitorum, but you also have extensor digiti minimi and extensor indicus. They all merge into that extensor expansion. So you see 
because the extensor expansion can slide distally when the long extensor tendon is slack, the lumbrical and the inner osseous muscles then have a mechanical advantage to cause extension of the interphalangeal joints while flexing the metacarpophalangeal joint. This I know is a difficult concept to see how this works, but I think if you take some time reviewing it and looking it over, it does make sense. That concludes our discussion of the hand. Thank you for your attention.